This, however, is not a standard Carrera. This is a Carrera S. And the S stands for so fat, balding, middle-aged man, go and have your midlife crisis somewhere else. The S rides low on fat, noisy tyres. It has a harsh, bone-breaking ride that jiggles your jowls and rattles the trim. It is as uncomfortable and as loud as Rod Stewart's leopard-skin disco trousers. The problem, I think, is where it is, Silverstone. Because you know when they do the Grand Prix programme, it always starts with like, here we are in Australia, and it's, duh, 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 there's a girl with a bikini on a beach, and men doing that, and all sunny, and then they go to Japan, and there's like young kids with all bzzz, and bright lights, and then Silverstone, and there's just the yokel who won too. <laughs> And then the, the, there's that road sign they always show, Silverstone, please drive carefully through our village. Not a hint of irony. <laughs> and that's the problem. But they are it's, talking about doing it in London, aren't they? It'll never happen. It won't. Because if you think how to make a track, they go, oh, yeah, we could go along Hyde Park. We could go down around Haymarket. Who's going to move the curbstones and the Belisha beacons and the traffic lights? Well, and how long in advance? They could never do it. It's much easier, I think, <laughs> to move London to Silverstone. <laughs> And then it would be great because you could start off with like bare skin hats and beef eaters and the eye and Terence Conrad. It'd be fantastic. You don't watch Grand Prix racing, do you? Uh, no. Is anybody else? There's a really interesting traction control system with two settings. There's on and there's off. Where this is going, we're going to find out if that ice cream van can jump over those. Now it may not look it, but this jump is tricky enough to rival any of the greats attempted by the likes of Kid and Knievel. You see that castle, that cuddly looking teddy bear, that tiger, and whatever that other thing is meant to be. They're all deceptively high and wide. End to end they cover a distance of 52 feet. This van, frankly, is not the best tool for high speed, high altitude, high jinks. It's based on a 1982 Ford Transit with a modest 2 litre engine, but it has done many, many thousands of miles, serving 99s to the good folk of Norfolk. So, it's old, it's not that aerodynamic, and we have made no modifications to improve the performance, apart from eat all of the ice cream to make it lighter. Okay, our stunt driver, Lee, is ready. The castles are fully inflated. Here we go. And off he goes. No, well, no. Uh, we, look, we'll get to it. How many bouncy castles do you think our evil cone if you see what I've done there, <laughs> I'm sorry, will clear? How many do you reckon? Three. None. Two. OK, well, let's find out. He's got to be doing 50 when he hits the ramp. So now, the moment of truth. Will he be a king cone or a flake? So he cleared no, none. None, none at all. None. But it was fun. Fine, but and there was a serious message in there. Oh, really, yeah, yeah, a very yeah. serious health and safety message. If you're an ice cream van driver, you see some bouncy castles, for heaven's sake, get out of your van oh, before yeah. jumping on them. No, absolutely. So, here we go. Which one will be the victor? Will it be the big, simple crocodile dundee? Will it be the part German, part American Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or will it be Raffles, the gentleman thief? The first test is a simple drag race. A good engine will give it thrust. A good chassis will keep it straight and true on these shifting, slippery sands. Foot buried, not what you'd call a lightning start. James is having a real mess. Come on, Australia. Oh, 
Uh, Jag is seriously flying. Oh, they are just in my dust. I'm going to lose. <laughs> 130. That, I believe, is mine. The British have fought them on the beaches and won. We're going to see how big a hole this thing actually digs when it sets off. OK, James, you ready? One, two, three, go. It's a pretty big hole. OK, thanks. Yep. Five seconds. Yep. What do you think? That's a lot of talk. Actually, it's managed to move a whole beach from there onto uh, to me. The Americans lecture the world on democracy and then won't let me turn the traction control off. It's supposed to be a big, bad, dangerous muscle car. Almost sure you might hurt yourself. A car designed by health and safety, this one. This is a Bugatti Veyron watch that I'm wearing. Very nice. OK? Now, you can't see the face there because when you hold the steering wheel, OK, like this, <laughs> see? That's that. where the face is. Because when you're holding the steering wheel, if you don't want to look at the, uh, the clock on the dash for whatever reason, <laughs> you can look at your wristwatch without taking your hand off the steering wheel. Hey, that's... that's... Guess how much it is? No idea. A grand? One hundred and forty thousand. No! No! And it's absolutely hideous. <laughs> the ridiculous thing is, is that time to do it up, it took three men. Three men to help me put it on. So I was like, how does this clip work? Because honestly, it just, you do, you need a butler to tell you to work that out. That's 140 grand for a watch commemorating a car that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and never will exist. That's amazing. The rear spoiler falls down. Other spoilers deploy from the side and fall out. And all of a sudden... We're flying! On the water! In a car! Yes! Welcome to the coolest thing in the entire world, a boat. It's called the Wally 118, and despite the underwhelming name, it's the most radical and futuristic yacht ever built. If Darth Vader was a pirate, this would be his ship. It costs 14 million pounds, but the money hasn't gone on gold chandeliers. Forget your gin palaces with drinks clubs. This is 2004. These window frames, carbon fibre. The dining table, that's carbon fibre. Everything is carbon fibre. Yep, it actually is. That's because this boat is as much about speed as it is about luxury. It was shaped in the Ferrari wind tunnel. Its gas turbine engines give out 17,000 horsepower. And even though it's 118 feet long and weighs 95 tons, it can still do 70 miles an hour. The trouble is, though, after this, any transport on dry land just seems so shabby. What on earth do you pop to the cash point in? <laughs> This isn't a bad start. The Pagani Zonda Roadster. Your Wally yacht owner will feel right at home here with the futuristic cabin and the swathes of carbon fibre. Now, when we drove the hardtop version of this a while back, we loved it. But the first question is, is it still as quick now that they've taken the roof off? Yes, it is still 
fast. 0 to 60, about three seconds. Top speed, 218 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, oh. you can sell anything on eBay these days. Really? Yeah, I sold a part-used box of cigarettes a while back. What? A what? Part-used box of cigarettes that I found in my house. A builder left them, painter. Yeah. Two had been smoked, and obviously I don't smoke, so um, I took a picture of them and stuck them on eBay. Did somebody buy them? Six pounds fifty. <laughs> <laughs> what was the list of things you'd done before you got down to auctioning off partly used packets of cigarettes? I made six pounds fifty, which is more than <laughs> being <laughs> made. It's more no, than it's being made out of a signature with your bloody face on it. So anyway. <laughs> All street guy. Oh, now have you seen these specs? Speed cameras, the new ones, that they, that they measure your average speed between two given points. So I was going through Northampton the other day, okay, and there's a 50 mile an hour speed limit, about two miles. Now, when you've got to maintain an average speed of 50, it means the only thing that you can look at is the speedometer. So you drive like that. You can hear the wheelchairs going under the wheels and the babies and old ladies. I'm not looking at I swear to God, right, they are going to kill people. Trust me. They're forward-facing, though, am I right? Yeah, the cameras, they take a picture as you're going towards yeah. them, yeah. I, I approve of those. Why? Because I'm a motorcyclist. Yeah, What's that got to do with it? There's no number plate on the front of a bike. <laughs> bike is... <laughs> it's true. It's true. Bike. It's true. It's true. Why? Why is that? Yeah, but the thing is, I've been through Northampton on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there no number plate? Well, I, I believe they were actually made illegal in early 70s. Well, because they used to be upright on the front yeah. mudguard. Yeah. Like so, so if you had a crash, it was like somebody just putting a meat cleaver in your head, essentially. <laughs> and we start, oddly enough, with the Renault Espace, one of the least sporty cars ever made. But it was one of the most important. <laughs> Like the Ford Model T, the Espace was one of the great seismic shifts in the history of the car. Today, people carriers sell in their millions and they're slowly killing off the hatchback and the saloon. And in Europe, it all began 20 years ago with this car. The upholstery may have been ugly, the car may have been ugly, but its lack of boot and bonnet and its flexible seating was a complete revolution. And you can tell this car was a revolution. Because when it hit the showrooms in 1984, no one got it. At first, Renault were confident. In fact, one of the creators called the Espace the silk underpants car, because he believed it would make everyone involved rich enough to afford posh undercrackers. But when the early sales figures came in, their underpants were, in fact, brown. Because in its first month, the Espace racked up worldwide sales of nine. That's it. Nine. Yeah. Went and drove a Dodge Charger, and he loved it so much, he came back and he said, I've got to buy one of those. I've got to buy one. Problem is, he didn't have the money. So, um, there's nothing that he hasn't opened in the last 12 months to try and uh, make up for it. I mean, there's been the Eastbourne Motor Show, which you hosted. Great event. I like this one. You black tie do awards for people who organise awards. That was a good one. <laughs> hey, that was a good, that was a good this, night out. This is the buffet we won, the National Car Park Awards. <laughs> how do you judge a car park? Well, you know, how, how good the... Parking. There's, there's, <laughs> like, there's not much urine in this lift, that's why. <laughs> only 40% of my car was nicked, and I was only stabbed once by a heroin addict while walking across it. It was a great event, and there were nice people. And you got a check? I did. <laughs> and you, you got enough checks? Yes. And he's done it! It's here! <laughs> he's got his charger, everyone! <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yes, I'd like to say sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what is interesting, however, is that the number of people who rang up and complained about me driving the Land Rover Discovery up a mountain is this long. That's a lot. That's how many people complained. The number of people who complained about us not wearing poppies? That's no. <laughs> that, that not not one. Right. So hang on, that means nobody bothered to complain that we haven't commemorated our fallen soldiers, the people who gave us freedom to do what we no. want, but then they write in to complain that you've... What, run over some moss? Yeah, that's thing. basically it. I've world. killed moss. It's a strange world we live in, isn't it? The weirdest really? world in the world. In fact, I think I might drive up it again next week. Absolutely. It is very good. There's another very good advantage to it, is there's room in the back for a schoolboy. We can demonstrate that. <laughs> <laughs> 
no problem at all. The thing I really like about these, though, is that they're actually superbly put together, these oh, cars. They are. OK, listen to this. Listen to the sound a door makes. Ready? Isn't that unbelievable? Listen. That is the exact noise that a dead pheasant makes when it hits the ground after you've shot it. <laughs> it does. Do you know I think it is? I mean, I don't know if that's the effect they were going for when they did that. But you're right, it is. Point is, have a look at this. Nine minutes, 59 seconds. That means you did the lap in... 9.59. 9 9.59 9 is under 10 minutes. I tell you something, I what? do that lap time in the van. Oh, I show right. you what's a really fast lap is, OK? That's all we have time Shut for. Shut up, Jeremy, it isn't. Now, that looked pretty fast, did it not? You did it in 9.59. How fast did she do it? Uh, Bear in mind, this is nine... her first lap in the car. Strange car to her. Nine, nine minutes something. No, come on. Nine Who wants to know how fast she did it? Yeah. I'll tell you. 9.59 for you, she did it. Nine minutes, 12 seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're rubbish. You are. Great. Right, now, there is an organisation called the New Economic Foundation which has said that all 4x4 vehicles should come with a health warning, like yeah. a box of cigarettes. We've got a picture, 4x4s make you impotent, <laughs> whatever. Um, they're saying that by 2020, the 4x4 vehicle will be the third biggest killer on the planet. I'm getting fed up with this. It's every week there's a third biggest killer. Smacking children, that's mm. going to be the third big. <laughs> Passive smoking, third big. Cheese. Yep. Cheese now has to have... Kill yourself with cheese, it's not even sharp. I don't... Well, it's <laughs> they say cheese has to have a government health warning. Have you seen that little orange sticker on it? And then, no, what was the other one the other day? We can't have sex in case we catch clematis. Yes. Yeah. We can't have... <laughs> whatever it is, yeah. They're just a bunch of mealy-mouthed, bitter and twisted failures whose lives haven't worked out as well as they were hoping. Nobody's going to sleep with them because they've got such ugly beards and they just reckon that we can't have fun either. The reason why middle-aged men such as you, that would be us, buy Porsches is because they're having a midlife crisis. Each of you must place an ad in a lonely hearts column uh, and you will refer to the car you've bought five points for each reply. So, James, why don't you read out your advertisement that you placed genuinely in wherever it was? 41-year-old man with sensitive hair. Dry... <laughs> <laughs> 41-year-old man with sensitive hair, drives Porsche 944 Lux, seeks brewery heiress or similar, must have liberal attitude to motorcycle components in the bath. And how many replies did you get? Well, three, actually. Three replies? Right. So that's 15 points. OK. OK. Uh, Hammond? Uh, well, my advert went like this. Uh, <clears throat> Porsche 924 owner, got it in first, uh, good-looking, mild-mannered, snappy dresser, 5 foot 11, uh, would like to know... <laughs> Mild mannered. <laughs> it's Come a on. lonely heart, sad. If I put angry short bloke, I won't get any replies. Pick <laughs> it up, talk so it up. So, how many replies did you get? None. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, that would be a big fat naught yeah, to you. Yeah. Now, what about you? <laughs> my ad, uh, Porsche 928 driver, that's the V8 one. Did you, Tall, <laughs> did you actually put that's the V8? Yeah, look there. That's the V8. You wrote that. Okay. <laughs> Tall, slim hips. Um, likes books with speedboats on the cover. Would like to meet someone for friendship. Maybe more. <laughs> Can I just point out? Do you know where he put that advert? He put that in the men seeking men column. <laughs> Frankly, a moment of genius, that, because I recognise that men would like the V8 thing. But did they? Yep, got well, two replies. So, you, Lord, right, plus right. ten! Another ten, another ten. Another ten. Another For me. Ten. They've all been convinced that by driving one of these, the Tasmanian fruit bat will come back to life, that GM crops will be uninvented, and that the Earth will once again cool down. So, this, I think, is a particularly good way of distracting you from the child who's run into the road, having not heard you coming. Actually, I'm being unfair. 
The Prius is so slow the child could run into the road, retrieve his ball and grow to puberty before you ever actually hit him. 0 to 60 takes 13 and a half seconds and the top speed is just 99. As a result, you couldn't even use it as a milk float because by the time you got to the end of your round, you'd be delivering cheese. Still, you might think a performance is a small price to pay if it means the Tasmanian fruit bat can be saved. Uh, sorry, but I drove one of these things from my house to London the other day. It's about 70 miles and I averaged 45 miles to the gallon. A normal diesel will do better than that. A lot better. And because the Prius has two engines, prices start at a whopping £17,500. And don't think you're getting much in the way of quality for that either. I mean, I'll give you one example. To stop this armrest thing rattling, they've used sort of adhesive foam lubber tabs. To sum up then, it's a very expensive, very complex, not terribly green, slow, cheaply made and pointless way of moving around. OK, the next award is for Britain's biggest anorak and it's him! <laughs> OK, we move on now to the Top Gear Clot of the Year Award. Uh, the winner will receive this prestigious golden cock. It's, uh, it's for the presenter that's made the biggest mess of things, and we'll kick off with James. Ah, yes. Um, I think this will be the City Rover secret film. You may remember we weren't allowed to drive the City Rover. Rover wouldn't lend us one. So we went to a dealership. I was disguised with a camera hidden in my tie. I went in, I filmed it, I came out, and I said that to the director, that is going to be brilliant. Here's what we saw. Here's me going in. And that's what I filmed with my tie. It's <laughs> the ceiling. So this is the city rover. <laughs> no, it was a fluorescent light. You can stop laughing. Why don't you tell them what you did? Ah, well, no. You see, I turned up to film the car in the usual way, and the director said, hello, good morning, have you got everything? And checked, have you got your, the right clothes? Yes, I've, I've got those. Have you got uh, the script? Yes, I've got that with me. And have you got your silly hair stuff? Oh, yes, right. Uh, where's the car? Ah, forgot that. <laughs> hadn't, <laughs> hadn't brought the car. We were fil left it at home in Gloucestershire. Poor. Yes, very Sorry. poor indeed, but I fear... I fear mine may be worse, because uh, you may have seen the Land Rover Discovery film recently, drove it to the top of a mountain in Scotland. Uh, we used a helicopter to get the last couple of shots, and I said to the pilot, look, I've really got to get home tonight, can you fly me to Glasgow Airport? Uh, and I said to the director and the crew, can you drive the car back down the mountain? No problem, got in the helicopter, fell asleep, woke up an hour later. Of course, I did give them the keys. <laughs> <laughs> so... Really, if you want to land over Discovery, there's one at the top of a mountain in Scotland <laughs> being guarded by five skeletons. Now, um, this is an audience uh, decision here, so hands up everyone who thinks James should win for his lousy camera work. Yeah. Anyone? There's one, there's a handful there, and Thanks. Richard for forgetting to take a car to a shoot. <laughs> hands up brilliant. there. I think I can see which oh, way dear. this is going to go. <laughs> who thinks it's Jeremy? I am the golden cock. Right. And as ever. We don't have to run. No, you see, we no, do. We don't. It's five minutes away. The Running train is faster than walking. Minutes. It's just a fact. Not really. But if I get on the train and you miss it, that's tough. No. France is a country you have to drive through to get to Italy. That's all it's for. <laughs> It's, look, the no. fact of the matter is, they've got better cheese, they've got better no, wine, they've they got better... They have. Have got better. They haven't got better cheese. They are a bunch of treacherous, lamb-burning, workshy peasants. <laughs> All right. uh, starting with this, which I found the other day. It's um, a mobile phone holder, uh, or as Richard Hammond calls it, a seat. <laughs> My charger, that's nice. Yeah. It's just perfect Hammond size. Yeah, through there and everything. Yeah. Now, you know, look at it. <laughs> have you got a Ferrari? You haven't got, you've turned up in a Ferrari shirt. What car have you got? A Volkswagen Jetta. <laughs> <laughs> this car goes like nothing you can possibly imagine. If you can change gear fast enough, it'll do 0 to 60 
in 2.9 seconds. The atom is forced on an entirely new level. I have never, ever driven anything that accelerates so fast. It's so quick, it can destroy your entire face. Either that or I'm John Merrick.